year 1943, a great day in the annals of the Royal Canadian Air Force, for on that day their own bomber group came into being under the command of Air Vice Marshal G.E. Brooks, OBE, of Halifax and Toronto. Here we see Canada's new group making full preparations for a major-scale bombing attack. The target has been chosen by Bomber Command, and operational planning is now the responsibility of the Air Vice Marshal and Group Captain Slemon, with members of Intelligence, Signals, Armorer, Photo, and Operational Staff. Preparation for the night's work starts very early in the day at one of Canada's new two-engine bomber stations. Not much to see from the air, maybe, but come a little closer. Aircraft remain and are serviced in the open air by the ground crew. Success of attack and the lives of the men who bomb Berlin, Lalliant, Brest, and many other major targets are in the hands of these lads. Not a spectacular job, but one where skill is vital to the general scheme of air support and attack. Of vital importance is the harmonizing and sighting of the guns to obtain accurate results. Many a pilot of the Luftwaffe has felt the deadly sting of these guns in aerial combat. Hand on the trigger, the gun's jammed. That's an air gunner's nightmare. So no one strips, assembles, or tests the guns but the man who fires them. They're his care and pride. They may stand for life or death in the face of the enemy. Now for a test flight. All ground crew concerned with the particular aircraft have been working since early dawn. They're never satisfied, even with 100%. But the air crew who are taking it on the night's operations are ready. Finally inspected and passed, the ground crew let her go. During this test, the work done on the ground is put through a grueling trial. Every possible condition is anticipated, and the crew act accordingly. just as proud of their aircraft as the men who fly them, and they have reason to be. Without the skill of the fitters, riggers, and others, the bombers would never leave the ground. Each man in each ground crew regards the craft he works on with personal pride. After every test flight, any complaints are entered into the logbook, but the very seldom are any complaints. Any work for the repair party on this trip? Maybe later, but not now. Nothing for the logbook this time, Corporal. The flying crews are off to the briefing room, and the aircraft is ready for bombing up. Bombing up accurately calls for skill, practice, and teamwork. An expert bombing up squadron can load 15 aircraft in two hours. A nice little bouquet for Hitler. Halifax station in another part of England, one of Canada's four engine bombers is being groomed for the coming night's performance. The rigger is checking the controls of the rudder. The fitter tightens his last bolt. Everything okay, Sergeant? Navigators have their own conference before the general briefing. 
They checked maps and routes, working out the best course to and from the target within the limits set. Like the bush guide, the navigator directs the hunter to the kill. Hundreds of gallons of gas go into the tanks to enable these great bombers to reach their target and return. So now, folks in Canada, you know one reason why gas for Sunday pleasure trips is no longer available. In the briefing room, the crews chosen for the night's mission await their commanding officer, who gives them their instructions gathered during the day by the various departments. The target tonight is a vital industrial area. The enemy defense likely to be encountered is detailed. Heavy flak, fighters, and balloons. The signals officer now gives wireless operators their identification codes and special service instructions. The intelligence officer informs them of landmarks by which the target may be found and to get right up on their target and do their stuff. Then comes the hardest time, the waiting period between the giving of instructions and the actual departure for the raid. But every man before he leaves knows just what he has to do and when to do it. The flare path is laid. Tension inside the crew room before the flight is like the locker room at school before the big hockey game. Everyone is under a certain nervous strain from the time he knows what the target is to be until he's on the way. But like the hockey player, as soon as the whistle blows, he has no time for misgiving. Like the coach of the school team, the captain gives last-minute instructions to his men. To see these boys leaving for their aircraft, one would never think that they're soon to travel hundreds of hazardous miles through ice, fog, storms, and fire. They might be going to an old-fashioned corn roast on some nearby beach. Every minute of the day, these men of Canada, your men, are proving their worth in the war against aggression. As you at home sit by your firesides and read or hear of strong formations of bombers over Germany night after night, you may well be proud that Canada is there in force with the Royal Air Force, adding weight to the hammer blows on the enemy. In Africa, too, with the Eighth Army and in other theaters of war, Canada and Canadians are helping to destroy the enemies of democracy. As production quickens and more and more bombers come off the assembly line in the great plants of all industrial centers, more and more men are arriving every day from Canada to fly them. Good hunting, lads. given for the takeoff and the journey begins. seeing now is not fiction. This is the real thing that's happening every day. Your men, your machines, darkening Nazi skies in ever-increasing numbers, helping to bring the promise of freedom to the enslaved on the far-flung battlefronts of the world. And there they go, Canada's youth, worthy successors to men like Bishop, Barker, Collishaw, and other great airmen. 
so into the dusk and on into the night, our bombers set their course for the objective. This operation is typical of the work these lads are doing today. Men who yesterday were students from the Maritimes, clerks in our eastern cities, miners of the far north, farmers from the golden wheat fields of the west, yes, and lumbermen from the tall timbers of British Columbia. To you, the men of the Royal Canadian Air Force, the men who fly its aircraft, and the men on the ground who keep them flying, we pay tribute.